Good morning, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us here on this Wednesday. Netta, we are getting halfway through the week here. <laughs> yeah, I can't believe it's already Wednesday. Uh, it is a brisk start, but yeah. I'm looking forward to this warm up Evan's been talking about. Yeah, I saw something what uh, inland was going to be upper 80s, maybe even a Ooh. big 9 0 on yeah, Friday. Yeah, exactly. And tomorrow, <laughs> your Thursday and Friday, those are the two days to kind of watch out for with that warmth really coming through. Friday's the notable day of very warm temperatures out there. Here's the view from Del Mar as we start off your Wednesday. It's beautiful out there. I mean, We've gotten rid of most of the clouds, so if you snap a photo of that sunrise, make sure to send it our way. Temperatures are a bit chilly, as Netta mentioned, a, a bit brisk out there. Uh, Palomar Mountain is at 40 degrees. Ramona, some of your inland valleys are uh, in the 30s, and we've also seen a little bit of cloud development towards some of those inland valleys as well, so low-level fog in some cases. Uh, Oceanside at 49 degrees, Carlsbad at 51, downtown San Diego at 52, and here is another view from Mount Woodson. A lot of beautiful pink and orange tones being let in passing clouds and chilly overnight temperatures warming up today tomorrow and Friday with plenty of sunshine and then it looks like we'll cool down just a bit head toward about average with a few clouds by Sunday and Monday. Jenny's checking up on what traffic looks like this morning here at 601. Good morning to you. Things are nice and quiet. No major issues with your travel times, but just about 10 minutes ago we got reports of a crash south on the 15 at Rancho California. Two cars involved in including a Honda, but I am being told that the cars are drivable. Looks like no injuries reported. I just want to show you the South County. Maybe you'll see a little bit of volume on the Coronado Bridge. Everything up to the north is good at 602. Developing this morning, a man who was shot and killed at his apartment over the weekend has now been identified as an active duty sailor. Police say he was shot by someone who knocked on the front door of his home. News 8's Chris Grove live outside the La Mesa Police Department with the search for the suspects and what we're learning about the victim here, Chris. Good morning, Eric and Netta. And look, still a lot that we do not know about this case, even though we are learning just a little bit more about the victim. But those two masked men that allegedly knocked on the door and then one of them opening fire on Cornelius Brown, killing him again, we still don't know what the motive could be or who those two people were. But this is Cornelius Brown, and this is what we know about him. As you saw there on his picture, he was active duty in the Navy, uh, stationed at Naval Base Coronado. We know he's from Sunrise and that he was just 22 years old at the time of his death. According to a statement sent to the San Diego Union Tribune, a Navy spokesperson wrote of Brown that this is a deep and tragic loss for the Abraham Lincoln family. Our thoughts and prayers are with Petty Officer Brown's family and loved ones. Now, there is a thousand dollar reward being put out right now because again, as we pointed out, uh, these two masked men that knocked on the door and then opened fire on Brown who answered the door, uh, not much known about potentially why they could have done this or who they could be. So they are, uh, the police are again, trying to collect as much information about anyone who may know something about either the motive or those two individuals. Now, there's also a GoFundMe that is being set up for funeral expenses for Cornelius Brown. And we do have a link to that GoFundMe up on our website on CBS8.com. All you have to do is click on that story link if you'd like to help contribute towards the Browns uh, funeral expenses. Eric and Netta. Chris, thanks. New guidance from the CDC now says masks are no longer necessary for everyone everywhere. Yeah, the update does ease restrictions for those of you who have gotten their COVID-19 vaccine. News 8's Allison Royal joining us from Harbor Island with details on the new guidance and then some reaction to the changes. Good morning, Allison. Good morning, Eric and Netta. Yeah, that's right. So the CDC said that if you have chosen to receive a COVID-19 vaccine, that there are some different guidelines for you now. When you're outdoors, you don't necessarily have to wear a mask depending on the activity and how many people that you're around. But don't expect life to change overnight if you have been vaccinated. When you go to the grocery store, still expect to be asked to wear a mask. If you go to get a haircut, still be asked to or still be expected to wear a mask. So things aren't just going to change overnight like that. But anyway, if you are expecting to go somewhere, like say you want to take the dog for a walk or you want to go for a jog in the park, throw a Frisbee, then hey, the CDC said that if you are vaccinated that you don't need to wear a mask anymore. However, it is still recommending that say if you want to go to a concert where there's a large crowd that you do go ahead and wear that mask, even if you have received your COVID-19 vaccine. The CDC made this announcement yesterday and President Biden also echoed support for it as well. 
Now, of course, the CDC guidelines have changed multiple times throughout this pandemic. And one of the different things about this is that the CDC has said this. San Diego County still has a mask mandate in place, so we're seeing if the county is going to tweak anything about that. But other states have actually done away with mask mandates, so it really depends where you go in the country what the standard on mask wearing is. Speaking of which, we wanted to hear what San Diegans had to say about this new news. So that's why yesterday at Balboa Park, we asked a couple different San Diegans what their opinions are on wearing a mask outdoors in public. I think that's great. If there's fresh air and, this, you know, that there's still spacing, I think that's good. And Governor Newsom actually sent out a statement yesterday saying that he echoes the CDC's support for this. And so it sounds like California maybe could tweak its guidelines on a more formal level coming up pretty soon. Netta and Eric. All right, Allison, thank you. And many of you are talking about this on our Facebook page. Here are some comments. Rosario says mask period, till the end of times. Uh, Patty writes, it simply boils down to this. If you care about other people in your community, you will get vaccinated and wear a mask as necessary. If you have no interest in the health and welfare of others, you probably won't get vaccinated or wear a mask. I find this so sad. Fran says, I don't want unvaccinated people walking around without a mask. Allison writes, thanks CDC for giving me permission to do what I've already been doing. I never wear a mask outside and I have no plans to get the vaccine. We'll head to our Facebook page if you want to chime in on all of this. Update now on vaccines. All county COVID-19 vaccine sites are now taking walk-ins. Yes, this means you no longer have to make an appointment to get vaccinated. County officials say they will still offer those appointments, and that can be scheduled online through the myturn.ca.gov website. But they will also be setting aside doses each day for walk-ups. Those doses will be available while supplies last each day at each site. For a list of locations that are currently accepting these walk-ups, go to cbs8.com and click on the health button. Here's how the county vaccine distribution numbers look this morning. Not much different from yesterday, to be honest with you. More than 2,577,000 doses have been given according to the latest update. That means just over 54% of people in the county have received one shot and over 36% have been given both doses. San Diego County is reporting fewer than 200 new COVID-19 cases for a fourth straight day. 144 new cases are being reported. No new deaths to report. The total of the uh, deaths here in San Diego, 3,692. COVID-related hospitalizations fell by six to 155. One county supervisor is proposing a new measure to address what some say is a disproportionate placement of registered sex offenders in East County. We've been covering this, especially the past couple weeks. Uh, supervisor Joel Anderson is calling for changes to the way the San Diego Sex Offender Management Council notifies the community. Supervisor Anderson will introduce a measure at a board meeting next week. He will propose the proposal. He will discuss rather this proposal during a media conference in Alhook Cajon expected later this morning. The man accused of shooting five people in the gas lamp quarter last week appears in court, but not for the fatal incident. At the time of his arrest, 32-year-old Travis Sareshte had a warrant out for a misdemeanor charge of operating as a security guard without a license back in 2017. Now, yesterday, he appeared virtually for his arraignment in an El Cajon courtroom, pleading not guilty to that charge. Sardeshda remains in custody without bail. His arraignment for the shooting case is scheduled for next Monday. San Marcos High School is back open this morning after an unfounded bomb threat. All students and staff were forced to evacuate yesterday afternoon. The sheriff's office learned of a pipe bomb threat on campus just before 1 p.m. Officers swept the campus with the help of bomb detecting dogs. They say no devices were found. The FBI says making a threat by phone, social media or text is a federal crime. New this morning, President Biden is expected to unveil the so-called American Families Plan today, a $1.8 trillion investment in children, families, and education. It includes money for free preschool, two years of free community college, subsidized child care, an extension of the child tax credit, and more. It would be paid for with tax hikes on wealthy households. But Republicans have already voiced opposition to tax increases. The president is expected to pitch the plan when he addresses a joint session of Congress this evening. We'll have a lot more on the president's address coming up here in just a few minutes.
And let's take a look at that forecast. Uh, jackets now, but maybe not so much later, right? Yeah, keep it on hand for the morning. Absolutely. It's a little chilly out there, mainly upper 40s and low 50s. So good to have it on hand. I'd say by the time we get to about 9, 10 a.m., those temperatures are really going to start to warm up. And we're going to make our way into the 70s this afternoon, 80s and 90s for your Thursday and Friday. Mission Bay looking gorgeous as we kick off your Wednesday. 72 is what we're going for. Between about 2 and 4, we probably will make it to about 73. We've gotten rid of the clouds. Notice that there will be plenty of sun sunshine to last through the day and that's going to be the trend for the next several days as high pressure is that dominant weather feature preventing us from seeing those clouds develop. We will however see a little bit of a cool down as we head toward your Saturday and your Sunday, but take a look at the next 10 days or so we are warming up. So Thursday and Friday are those two notable days to watch out for along the coast. We could cool down just by a degree or two into your Friday. However, for your deserts and for your mountains, those are where we really see those prolonged and kind of delayed warm ups. Triple digits are expected for Friday and Saturday across the desert. So even along the coast, it will feel very summer like for Thursday and Friday, about 10 15 degrees above average, and then we cool down a bit for Saturday and Sunday, ushering in just a few clouds, nothing too major going to cool down, but really not see any wet weather in the forecast. And then Monday through Friday of next week, we still are hanging on to those 70 degree temperatures at about average for this time of year. A beautiful next uh, 10 days or so. You can see how on our satellite radar imagery we have kept things dry and calm. We did see a few passing clouds and we still in some cases are hanging on to those as the sun comes up. A few sprinkles over Borrego Springs, for example, but uh, beyond that, the next three days include very pleasant weather, mild temperatures for today and then warming up quite a bit into tomorrow and your Friday. We'll have more details on what that looks like. Take a look at that extended eight day forecast. It's in just a few minutes, but for now,